We love getting your questions, so we want you to keep them coming via Facebook, Twitter, and on our webpage. Who knows, we might just answer your question here in the studio audience next. Today on an all new Daily Helpline, Let's welcome star of History Channel's hit reality show, Pawn Stars, Corey Harrison. The best part of my job is working with my family every day, and the worst part of my job is working with my family right, every day. Right. I was always considered the quote unquote fat friend. So physically, you're alive. Yeah. Emotionally, you're dead. Yes. Because Miles is a man. And, I, and, and I'm ready for Miles. Okay. I am. <laughs> I am. Miles, she is ready for you. I'm Miles Edcox. And I'm Spirit. And on today's show, we're going to find out what the term microwave dating means. We'll meet a father who is still living with his parents because of money problems. Mm. And a young man who blows all of his money the moment he gets it. But first, we have a very special guest that we'd like for you guys to meet today. And he's going to share a very drastic change that's taken place in his life. Let's welcome star of History Channel's hit reality show, Pawn Stars, Corey Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good. Have a seat for us. Thank you. I love your show. Can I just say that? Thank you. <laughs> Some days I think I might love it more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> what is that like, though, to work so closely with your family in such tight quarters with cameras on you all the time? Um, you know, the best part of my job is working with my family every day, and the worst part of my job is working with my family. Right, every day, right, right. Know, so. <laughs> But your journey has been an incredible one, not just with your family, but you personally, right? Absolutely. I'd, um, you know, I never thought it would have never thought it would have been like this. You know, yeah. I, I was 400 pounds when we started filming the TV show. So and wow. I know you are like, how, how much do you weigh today? Uh, 210. 400 to yeah. 210. Yeah. Tell us about how you did that. Mm -hmm. um, about four years ago, I went to uh, my doctor for just a regular, uh, you know, routine physical, and yeah. he uh, started gave me a stack of prescriptions about that thick. And said, really? Uh, and I was like, well, dude, I didn't think I was sick when I came in here. I wasn't even. It was a physical. And he was like, well, you're going to have diabetes probably by the end of the year, so uh, we're going to wow. give you this stuff to kind of delay that. That's a wake up call. And um, yeah. you know, it, it came really strong for both sides of my family. My gram grandmother on my father's side is a type two diabetic. My okay. mother is a type one diabetic. So I just seen what it had done to their bodies, and yeah. you know, just swore I would never get it. So what was that like, though, to hear a doctor go, oh, well, you're probably going to have it by the end of this year anyway. What did that do to you? Um, I immediately started thinking, okay, so I'm the guy that's going to lose my leg in a year. Almost in a panic, I was driving home, and I saw the uh, place where they did the lap band surgery, and I just pulled in and within three days had the surgery. And, really? Uh, yep. And, um, you know, the story kind of goes from there. I think I lost 50 pounds within, I want to say, six weeks of getting it. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, when you're 400 pounds, you're far beyond a Diet Coke and jogging mm -hmm. on a treadmill fix. It's just, yeah. not, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. So, uh, but losing 50 pounds in almost six weeks, I mean, you, it feels like someone took a backpack full of rocks off you. Really? Mm. So then you can actually start going to the gym and you start, you know, feeling more comfortable with yeah. exercise. And you know, the next thing I know, I was boxing five days a week, 12 rounds a day. So it's, wow. Um, and now I'm a... 190 pounds lighter. So. That is amazing. There's been a, that was a huge physical transformation. Yeah. Was there a, an emotional transformation to follow? Um, you know, it's, a, it's funny. When I had the, uh, when I had the surgery, the doctor told me, you know, yeah, you know, you better be careful with what you do because, you know, if you're 400 pounds, you tend to be, you know, people that are that big tend to be really charismatic you know, and a way of, you know, coping with yeah. being 400 pounds. And he said, I know you can talk, so... You know, uh, your life's going to change dramatically once you start losing some weight. Yeah. And uh, you know, your confidence level just goes through the ceiling almost. And did it do that for you? Uh, somewhat, yeah. I mean, it, uh, you just feel a lot better about yourself. Yeah. So what is it, you know, one of the things that I hear oftentimes are when people say that they look in the mirror and who they feel like they still are on the inside doesn't match what it is on the outside. Did you ever have that experience? Um, I, I think so. I mean, when I uh, I never saw myself as a uh, morbidly obese 400 pound guy. Wow. Okay. You know, I thought I was just a big guy, <laughs> and then uh, you know, then you start seeing yourself on a TV show and a few things like that happen. And you're like, oh wow, I'm 
you need to get I need to lose some weight. Yeah. And it's also inspired your your uh, Chum Lee. Oh, to lose weight. Absolutely. Uh, I think he thought we were going to be uh, fat buddies together, and um, <laughs> once I started losing weight, I think he felt kind of uh, you know like I was leaving him or something. Yeah. So he uh, he ran and got his ass into the gym real quick. Nice. <laughs> I know then that you're going to be able to relate to our first guest. Okay. So are you ready to meet her? Absolutely. You ready to get this Let's work go. in? Okay. So we know that Corey's going to be able to help us. I want to introduce you guys to our first guest, Brittany, who was morbidly obese until she made a life-changing decision seven months ago. Here's her story. I've struggled with weight problems my whole life. I've been obese, actually morbidly obese. I've always wanted to lose weight, but I never had the willpower and the strength to do so. And the doctor told me that if I didn't get this weight off of me, I was going to end up dying of a massive heart attack. One year ago, I decided to get the gastric sleeve surgery because I didn't want my son to grow up without having a mother in his life. Before the surgery, I was 402 pounds, and now I am down to 200 pounds. My biggest insecurity about my body is the excess skin. When I look in the mirror every day, I realize that this is the price I have to pay because I've done this to myself, because I let myself go. I get really depressed whenever I see myself in the mirror. I feel sad and I feel lost. I feel like I'm going backwards instead of forward. Wow, let's welcome Brittany. So is that really how it feels, like you're going backwards instead of forward? Yeah. Why is that? Well, even though I had like weight loss surgery, you know, I still have like problems with accepting myself. It's different, you know, every time I look in the mirror, I still see the fat person. Mm -hmm. And it's just like looking right back at me. It's like a haunted memory. Mm -hmm. Did you think that everything would change once you lost the weight, that it would all just kind of get better? I really didn't ask questions about the excess skin. Mm -hmm. And even though like I feel more energetic and I feel happy and, but, but whenever I just see myself, I'm like a, yeah. pretty disgusted. Can you relate it all to what it is that she's talking about? Yeah, I mean, I had the lap band surgery, so and you know, I've lost almost 200 pounds, and I, I have excess skin. Um, I think uh, I think you need to be more focused on the fact that your son's going to have a mother for a few more years, and you know, you didn't die from a heart attack. I think uh, you know, I think you could need to focus on that more, and that you did lose 200 pounds, and you know, all the excess skin. That's you know, that's a problem you can deal with down the road. That you know you can get that removed. It's not a you know it's not something that has to be permanent. I think, uh, but I think you know I think the bigger thing is that you're alive. But being a woman, you have to have confidence in yourself, and it's, it's different. Like I don't know. Like I know most men, they are, you know, they they can accept things more than a woman can. So well, how, so physically you're alive. Yeah. Emotionally you're dead. Yes. And when did that start? Let's go back, even before the weight came on. Um, you know, I've had a rough childhood, and I've, um, in order to get through the days, I would just, you know, eat and eat and eat. And I was an emotional eater. And um, one day, my sister called me, and she goes, you know what, Brittany, me and you are going to get this sleeve surgery together. I said, I'm not going to lose my sister. I said, you have a son? and you're not going to go downhill. I said, you're the only blood that I have. And she says, you're going to, you know, you're going to help yourself. I said, I want to push you to help yourself. I think we kind of just glazed over yeah. this, a pretty key thing that you said, which was I had a pretty rough childhood. Yeah. And we don't have to open that whole piece up, but it is important for us to have a starting point because I believe there was a, there was a message that you downloaded at some age that you've carried with you ever since, and you still have it that I feel worthless and I don't feel like I'm going to ever succeed. And do you still believe it? I do. Yeah, and see I think that that's part of what we need to work on today because I think that if you still believe that message then removing excess skin is not going to change that. Let's talk about the inside and then we'll de deal with the outside, okay? okay. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back. More to continue with Brittany right after this. <laughs> Coming up, what's the area that's the most problematic for you? My arms. That's Would like it be difficult for you to show us? Oh, I can show you my arms. Mm -hmm. We 
love getting your questions, so we want you to keep them coming via Facebook, Twitter, and on our webpage. Who knows, we might just answer your question here in the studio audience next.